In the astounding words of John chapter 6, Jesus says, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. So if someone asks, is the Eucharist food? The answer is, absolutely. Let's explore what that means with help from the Bible and St. Thomas Aquinas. On the night before he died, Jesus had a meal with his apostles. We know this meal as the Last Supper. This calls to mind the Passover meal with the lamb that Israel ate each year in commemoration of their exodus from slavery in Egypt. Jesus himself is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. At the Last Supper, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Similarly, he took a chalice of wine and gave thanks. He gave it to his disciples to drink from it, calling it the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. The Eucharist is food to be eaten, yet it is not ordinary food. This is Jesus Christ himself, who comes to us under the signs of bread and wine to unite us together with him in grace. St. Thomas uses three scholastic categories to consider the sacraments. In the Eucharist, the sacramentum tantum, or mere sacrament or sign, is the bread and wine. The res tantum, or the reality that is brought about, is our union with Christ in grace. We have the res et sacramentum, or the reality and sacrament, as the body and blood of Christ who comes to us through the consecration at Mass in transubstantiation, that complete conversion of substance. The substances of bread and wine are no longer there when the substance of Christ himself comes. Christ's real presence in the reality and sacrament together presupposes the signs of bread and wine whose accidents or various characteristics do not disappear. St. Thomas clearly thought of the Eucharist as food, calling it a sacred banquet. He composed a prayer about the Eucharist that Dominicans love to pray. O sacred banquet, in which Christ becomes our food, the memory of his passion is celebrated, the soul is filled with grace, and the pledge of future glory is given to us. The sacrifice of the Mass is indeed a banquet. And St. Thomas teaches that its effect can be seen, in part, through its manner of being food and drink. He says, This sacrament does for the spiritual life all that material food does for the bodily life, namely, by sustaining, giving increase, restoring, and giving delight. Think about it. Food sustains us. If you don't eat, you waste away. The Eucharist is our spiritual food, the food for the journey, that sustains us as we make our way to the promised land. Food gives increase. Children grow up big and strong by eating the right food. So too the children of God grow up to be saints with an increase in the grace and charity that the Eucharist gives. Food restores what we lose in the day through expending energy. When you exercise a lot, you need to eat more. The Eucharist restores what we lose in the spiritual life so that we may have all the grace we need. In fact, the Eucharist restores the soul from the harm of venial daily sin that tires the soul. Food gives delight. Do you have favorite foods? The Eucharist has all sweetness within. This is the bread from heaven containing in itself all delight. Yes, the Eucharist is real food. We need food when we are hungry. What kind of food do you hunger for? Hunger or desire is of greatest importance in understanding the Eucharist. In our daily life, if you are not in the least bit hungry, but already feel very full, you are less likely to eat. Think of an all-you-can-eat buffet. Some people make themselves hungry before that big dinner so as to get as much out of that experience as possible. Similarly, St. Thomas teaches that the Eucharistic fast, not eating before receiving the Eucharist, is precisely because the greatest devotion is called for at the moment of receiving the sacrament. We are to hunger for Christ in fervent devotion. 
the more we hunger for him, the more we will be satisfied by him in receiving the Eucharist. We work up our hunger for Christ before receiving him so as to receive much from him. Now, there are two ways of eating the sacrament. One is sacramental and the other is spiritual. First, one eats only sacramentally and not spiritually when one receives the Eucharist without receiving any spiritual benefit. For example, when someone conscious of unrepentant grave sin receives the Eucharist, that one receives sacramentally but has done a sinful act. That is not a spiritual consumption. Second, one may eat spiritually and not sacramentally. When someone is not actually receiving the sacrament but expresses a holy desire to receive, that one receives spiritually the effect of being united to Christ through faith and charity. In addition to either a merely sacramental or merely spiritual way of eating the Eucharist is what St. Thomas understands to be the perfect way. The perfect way of receiving the sacrament is by actually consuming the Eucharist in a state of grace with a holy desire. This combines both ways of sacramentally and spiritually eating the food of the Eucharist. Our Lord says, My flesh is food indeed. With St. Thomas and all the saints fed by Christ, we can hunger for Christ himself, made present to us in the sacred banquet, the food we need for the journey of life on earth. For readings, podcasts, and more videos like this, go to Aquinas101.com. While you're there, be sure to sign up for one of our free video courses on Aquinas. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and share with your friends because it matters what you think.